Hello and welcome back to Adventure All The Way. I'm Emma and I'm a home educating mum of three from the UK. And today's video is a day late and I'm terribly sorry about that. I just uh, had all those days yesterday where everything like just caught up on me and I did not get, um, I dropped some balls as they say, as I've said before about juggling, juggling your plastic in your glass balls. Yesterday this channel was a glass, was a plastic ball and I dropped it on the floor. Um, and usually I have videos prepared in advance and uploaded in advance, but that didn't happen. Did not happen. So, 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 so. Um, oh, I know. Oh, yawning already. <laughs> I just wanted to come on and do a quick video today because I've also got other things, other stuff to film as well. And that is just talk about my biggest home education tip. I get a lot of emails from you, lovely people asking me for advice and for help and I love it. I love emailing you and I love speaking to you. But my biggest tip to always people is always like this is yours, yours and your child's and you get to you get to be whatever you want to be, you get to do whatever you want to do, and that's the important thing. And I think I haven't even realised that I've been advising people to do that, but I've also been fixated on doing it one particular way myself. And that, it's just, it's just weird, because my friend, who I've spoken about before, um, I call her L on this channel, which is her initial, um, I literally told her today as well. I was just like, I saw her today, and I was just like, when I talk about you, I talk about you on my channel, and uh, sometimes I and I refer to you as your initial. And she was like, oh. <laughs> um, so I was talking to her about it, and I said like, look, you know, she'd she'd advise me something really really little. Advise me to use these books, and um, and they're just Collins mental math books. They're nothing special. They're nothing fancy. Nothing groundbreaking. She just advised me to use them. Uh, well, just to said, I tried these. I've I've, I've been doing these books uh, with my kids, and I think they're really cool, and they're amazing. It's been a complete game changer. And I was like, oh, okay, simple as a math book. I got them myself, and I was suddenly like, oh. I thought in my head when she handed them to me, and I'll show you one of them. This is one of the ones I've got for moving on forwards. I was like, oh, oh. And in my head I was like, oh yeah, you know, there's there's 40 quizzes in here, you can use them for assessments, right? Wrong. That's not the point. The point is, I get to make my own rules. If this is the only math book I use, and amazingly, this was the point. There are 40 quizzes in here, I believe. Yeah, 40 quizzes in here. So technically one a week. If you're doing a maths curriculum, one a week to test you, to see if you're doing well. Or, what if this was the only maths book you used? What, just 40 lessons? Well, no, because when you finish one, you go on to the next one. But, what I found, and this was what my friend was trying to gently like tell me, which was what she's found with her children, is say you've done one of these quizzes and they're not pretty, they're just black and white, but they're quick, they're done quickly, and they get this time question wrong. What do you then go and work on? Time. You don't then go, well, they got addition right, I'm then going to go work on addition. You're just finding out their strengths, the strengths and weaknesses, the gaps, and the full bits of their education, and then you go in and fill in the gaps. That's it. Now, this was 3.99 and Charles is currently working on this one which says ages six to seven but that's where I just wanted to take him take him down and that's where he's been because of where we started him um for example after re after doing he's done quite a few pages now he's done 16 of these and I know that I need to work on digital time with him I need to work on fractions with him and I need to put work on half past and quarter past time with him so far so we need to get a book on time, we need to get a book on fractions. One of those cheap ones from the works. And then we just keep doing it until he gets it. But get and then we'll we'll buy one time book. And then if he's still not he's still not completely confident about it, then I'll go and buy another time book that's completely different. So it feels different, but he's still I'm learning in a different way to help him get it. And 
that has been a big game changer for me and I wanted to pass that on to you because I know how great these 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 moments can be when someone thinks about them you've got you know suddenly goes ah you've got to share them right and then I want to read to you from Sandra Dodd's big book of unschooling and this is borrowed from the same friend quite a while ago now I should probably get back to her but I keep reading it so and it's about reading learning to read now I'll give some context Bessie is eight in January okay and we've been pondering dyslexia with her for a while um because oh you see because she just couldn't get learning phonics even now she's her reading age is about five and Albert's is four years nine months or something like that like he's catching her up really quickly and I was like oh we're, we're never gonna get there. We're never gonna get there. She's like, she's she needs some special education to help her learn to read. I'm not capable. She's not capable. And all of these things that aren't true, and they aren't fair. They aren't fair to her, and they aren't fair to me. I'm just gonna tilt the camera down a little bit because the lighting's annoying me. Thank you. They aren't fair to her, and they aren't fair to me because I'm capable, and she's capable. So, I. It just suddenly clicked for her the other day. It just suddenly clicked for her. And um, she has read 10 books in seven days. Mind you, only the first band of Rib, Biff, Chip and Kipper kind of books. But she's read them and she's asked, can I read a book to you, mummy? Yeah, go for it. You can read a book to me. Can I read a book to you, Daddy? Yeah. Can I read a book to Albert? Yeah, go for it. Can I read a book to you, Charles? Yeah, sure. She's asked to read every single one of those books. And I've got a little reading record and I'm writing them down, noticing any mistakes, I'm writing them in the book so I know that I might need to focus on them with her. Read me. And she's doing it. She's read, just read another one to her dad. And I've been up here talking to you lovely people. So, it just clicked. And with Charles, it clicked when he was seven. With Bessie, it clicked when she was almost eight. And it made me go, you know what? I'm just gonna have Albert on reading eggs. We're gonna do the reading eggs workbooks, one page a day or so. I'm gonna leave it at that because it will click. As long as I give him the knowledge to learn to read, I facilitate that beginning bit. I let help him learn his letter sounds the rest will come. Just gotta keep reading to him. So Albert's homeschool curriculum, home ed curriculum is, I'm gonna keep teaching him phonics. Just, that's it, just to keep teaching him phonics. Just the reading eggs, gentle, light, fluffy bunny kind of thing. And I'm gonna read to him, I'm gonna read to him more than I've ever done before. I'm gonna read to him maybe three times a day instead of just once a day or twice a day. I'm gonna read to him five times a day or whatever. And I want to read this book to you. Just the page, okay? And it says... I'm just going to read this page, this whole page. It says just, the title says reading. Reading is one of the three R's. People love it and fear it and misunderstand it. People will say things like, once you can read, you can learn anything. They didn't mean how to ride a bike though, or to throw pottery, or know which colours look best with teal or tarp a truck. In school, children need to know how to read so they can see where to put their name on each worksheet and so the schools feel justified doing what they're doing. In school, young children read specially created limited reading level materials. The parents feel good that their child is reading, but most of the children can't read a newspaper or recipe or menu. They can only read school books or readers. Some of the, some of, some of the children can't even read the readers. Some will never read regular outside materials. When learning to read happens naturally, it doesn't look like school's reading lessons. It doesn't take years. It might only take days. But the tricky part is when those days will come. If you plant watermelons, picking at the leaves and threatening the vine will not get you a watermelon before one was going to naturally grow and mature. It's the same with children. When parent, what parents can do by picking at and forcing and threatening a child to keep him from ever, is to keep him from ever wanting to read. They might persuade him that reading is hard and certainly too hard for him, or that he's lazy and not a reader. They might happen to be doing lessons about the same time he figures reading out, and then they'll assure themselves that and their child that the parents taught him to read. He couldn't have done it on his own. 
Don't rob your child of the experience and of the knowledge that they can, they can learn to read without help. If someone can learn to read, surely he can learn other things. I don't mean to say that after he learns to read, he can learn other things by reading. I mean that reading is complex, more so in English than in some other languages. <clears throat> and if your child knows that he learned to read, he will have great confidence in his ability to learn. And so will his parents. So, this video I will bring it to a close. And my advice is, less is more. Less is more. And you can really, really do a lot by not doing very much. I'm not saying ditch all of the structure and unschool. I'm not saying do one particular way or another. I'm just saying chill out. That's my tip. Chill out and make your own rules. You and your child are in charge of this beautiful journey. It is your journey. And it's a journey that will continue until it stops and then your child will continue on without you. And this is beautiful. So don't waste it. And just relish in this beautiful time you have with each other. So reading will come, maths will come. And yeah. Have a great week everybody and I will see you on Wednesday for our first planning and organising video. How to plan and organise your home when your children never leave it. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I will see you soon. Bye.